Hi, this is Nick from Periscope Film, and we don't usually do live video, but today is kind of a special day. This is 16 millimeter and 8 millimeter film that we're rescuing, actually. This is a very large collection that belonged to a, a friend of mine who's become rather elderly and can't take care of it anymore. Many, many boxes here. This is a German uh, 16 millimeter film, probably from the 1940s. Um, is the break breakdown of the 1930s. We're going to be spending the coming months assessing all these things, hopefully share some of our discoveries of what's in here. So this is about uh, midway through our day here. We are moving all these films into a storage locker. It's going to be quite a bit of work, but uh, kind of looking forward to seeing what kind of rarities we find. And we know there's a lot of unique movies in here, so it's kind of exciting, but <laughs> also a little overwhelming. Welcome, uh, I'm Doug Wiener and this is my business partner, Nick Spark, and we own and operate the premier stock footage company, Periscope Film. We actually take these films and we transfer them to the HD and 4K so we can make them available for the public. And we like to say about our business that we preserve history one film at a time. In this particular case here, we're gonna preserve a lot of history as you can see. for the last week essentially is sorting through this gigantic collection of 16 millimeter and 8 millimeter home movies and the first thing we're doing is separating out the 8 millimeter from the 16 millimeter and then the further separation that we're doing is trying to take the home movies and separate them from the commercially made movies. Well it's not a feature but this Bold Journey is a um, television show from 1957. So this would go in the rack with the commercial films. The reason I guess it's all taped together, it's probably three separate episodes of that show. Very rare show, by the way, from uh, early era television. So I'm excited to see those. You know, we have 27 years of experience here, knowing how to handle all the film, knowing what has to be done to it, knowing what films uh, just physically, you know, over history have degraded to such a point you, they're not worth saving, and which ones that we can rescue. Every day as we open these boxes, there are surprises. And one of the surprises that we don't like to see is actually its, it's smell. It's, there will be an intense vinegar odor sometimes coming from some of these films. And what that means is the film is starting to deteriorate. Um, it's acetic acid. And that's a chemical process that robs the world uh, of a lot of films. Yeah, you can see, I mean, this is emitting extremely heavy odors and it's, it's hexagoning. And uh, it's a goner. We'll never get to see that one again. Oof. See, it's where we got, it's kind of sad, you know. Here's this someone's memory. It's kind of, it's it's turned this hexagon pattern, not just this outside, but it's it's rock solid. So, you know, is this savable? Those are the films that we will try to scan first. So that's a little bit of the method to the madness here today. You know, we're saving them as fast as we can. And we, you know, we want to save them all and then we, have to pick and choose too. Right here where we are, the old MGM studio is over that way. The old Hal Roach studio is over that way. By, I'm talking like five blocks from here. And there's always been Hollywood and then there was the other Hollywood. There were companies making industrial films, educational films. Those were always the second class films. The things you saw in your classroom or that were put out by Ford Motor Company. Those kind of films were viewed as ephemeral films. They were films that were made to last like two years and then they throw them away or put them on a shelf. You never see them again. And what we have really harnessed is finding those films, saving those films, scanning those films, showing those films to the world because suddenly you see histories of things that companies created that were really important to the American story in the 20th century but you know there's been no way to see those things until we put them up there. I love this. Glacier National Park brought to you by the Great Northern Railway Company. Yeah. So that's going to be some probably very beautiful national footage. Films. Yeah. This is a monojet injection film. So this is a film I'm guessing is like produced by a jet engine company. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what that term means, but what if it's early fuel injection? Yep, could be a car company. Boy, this is looking like a mystery to me. 
So this is, a, you know, this is the kind of thing that I love to see, because if you ever heard of this system, the Monodrex system, but it looks like maybe it's about syringes. Oops, Oops. and the film broke. This this is, well, this is what we see. See, somebody, somebody used a piece of scotch tape to make a splice, which is not what you want to do. So this is what we end up doing. We have to repair these films to make them, you know, scannable. So this is the next step in the process. We've taken some of the films from that gigantic collection we've been processing and we've brought them back, scanned it into HD and 4K. Assisting me with this is Esteban. Say hi, Esteban. Hello. He's um, setting up the scan station, which is a scanner we use to, to look at all of our content and, and to scan it. So you can see that the footage is reddish. The blue dye uh, tended to fade with film stocks that were made in the, in the 60s and 70s called Eastman Color. They tend to lose the blue. So what Esteban's going to be doing is trying to bring back the color and you can see he's experimenting with it right now. It's not visible to the naked eye but some of the dye is still extant. Using some of the color correction tools he can put the cyan back and get us a pretty good looking color version such that you would never be able to see for example with a projector. Fortunately, Esteban's pretty good at this at this point because he's been doing this for many years. Color coding by needle gauge of the cap and the sheath of the unit makes quick identification possible. This is exactly what I love to find in a collection is a lost moment in time. What I'm most proud of Periscope Film, it's that we have made all of this history available. 10,000 films, and again, we've probably collected another 10,000 we have not yet scanned. It all can be searched, and it's available for everybody to look at. That's something magical. This is the city that Vision built. We started putting up films like a decade ago, and what was unexpected and exciting and really, really cool sometimes was just the feedback loop that was created, the community that started to exist around our channel. I'll never forget that the first time somebody wrote a comment and said, my God, I just saw my father in your movie. It's an amazing thing to be able to provide the public.